Okay, so we did the first two pages of what you sent me the other day. We didn't get to the third page. You want to start there? I haven't checked my email. Did you send me anything more today, or? Yeah, I sent two more pages today. Oh, all right. Get to those after we finish these. So, okay. number thirty-one. Um, so we're doing implicit differentiation. Okay. Good. So then, would be three x squared plus um, 2x dy dx. We'll call that y prime for the moment. Okay. Then plus y, 2y equals... 3y prime squared. 3y squared times y prime. Times y prime. In other words, it's the chain rule. Right. Well, uh, it's coming across a y instead of an x, so you have to follow it with y prime. Okay, plus? Plus 1. Okay. Now, we need to solve that for y prime. And this just, it's not tricky algebra, but this is what most people stumble on, is solving these for y prime. So, how do you solve for y prime? Um, well, I'm going to try to get all the y primes onto the right side, because it seems like it would be easier. Okay. Um, so, I was just going to subtract one first to get the one over on the left. And then subtract 2x y prime uh, to the right side. So 3y squared dy or y prime dy uh, minus 2x y prime. Um, and then on the other side, it's did I do it right? I think I did it right. 3x squared plus 2y minus 1. Yeah. Okay. Now, the next step. Next step would be to factor out a y prime. Good. So then you get y prime times uh, 3y squared minus 2x. And then you would divide by 3y squared minus 2x. And that's equal to dy dx. Yeah, let's write it like this. One reason I like to use y prime is it's just not as much writing. Right. Okay. So there we have dy dx. It wants the second derivative. So we have to do that again. So what, let me just point out one thing here, is it wants, let me erase that just so I have room. It wants d of this over dx. Right. Okay. So what are we going to do? Um, we'll probably do the closer rule. Yeah, it looks like we almost have to. I can't believe they gave you such a complicated one. But we probably need to go through it. Because the, getting the second derivative is a little bit trickier. Let's go back and call that y prime. Okay. So, y double prime let's see where can i write it here um let me erase some of this stuff the top and make sure i didn't change that what is that two two squared no 
Why is there? Uh, what's that hash mark above my two? I think it's just something you erased. Like the leftovers. Okay. Is that the right answer for Y prime? Yes. Okay. So starting up here at the top, I'll try to write small. Y double prime equals go. <laughs> y double prime equals so low D high, so low so three X or three Y squared minus two X times um six X plus two minus oops 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 six S plus two Y prime Oh yeah 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 six X plus two Y prime Yeah, there's no way I was there was no way I was writing small enough. Uh let's see. Um uh, all right. Minus what? Hey, let me let me do this because we're gonna lose track. This thing's gonna get complicated real fast. It already is. So that's the bottom times the derivative of the top. Right. So then the top is three x squared plus. What's the next? Y. What's the next sign I need to put after the v minus u prime minus? Okay. So minus three x squared plus two y minus one times. Um, is it minus 2y or is it plus 2y? Plus 2y. Plus 2y minus 1? Yeah, times um, 6y y prime minus 2 all over. 3y squared minus 2x squared. Okay. That's the exact pattern you're supposed to use. And now, what? Well, now, <laughs> I would, I don't, I wouldn't usually simplify because they're small numbers. Well, plus, look at the question. They merely want you to evaluate it at 2 comma 1. They don't want the function. Right. So what I would do first is plug in 2 and 1 for y prime so we can have the value of what y prime is. So then we only have to plug in a value and not another equation. Is that valid is the question. Um... Let me think here for a second. Uh, I've got a problem just like this in my book, not quite as complicated. But the next step it does is plugs in y prime wherever you see y prime. Right. Then you can evaluate it. But I guess that's doing the same thing, isn't it? Right. Yeah. No, you're right. It does seem to be doing. I think it is valid to do it this way. N your way is much simpler. Yeah, I can create a number out of this, and I don't have to deal with this rational function here. So what is right. y prime equal to? So y prime is equal to 6 plus... Okay, here's another case where I definitely recommend you doing it the long way. Too easy to make a mistake doing it the short way. You just did. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In other words, yeah. if you just well, take the time and fill in everything, then it's much less likely you're going to make a math error. Right. 
All right, what is that? That is 12, 16, 15 in the numerator. Right. And 15 over negative 1. Okay, so negative 15. Boy, there's so many chances to make a math error here. And now we're going to plug in 2 for every time we see x, 1 for every time we see y, and minus 15 for every time we see y prime. Okay. So do we, do we need to do all that or should we go on? I think we should go on. I, I can do that. I think so too. In other words, we're not here to practice arithmetic. Right. Um, so that'll clearly give us a number I can't even begin to guess. Uh, okay. Well, the number's either going to be plus or minus 13 or plus or minus 207. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, let's go on. Yeah, we don't need to. I'm surprised at the complexity of that. Merely because that's going to take anybody. I don't care how smart you are. That's going to take a lot of time to do that problem. Right. It is a calculated problem. What's that? It is? It is. Yeah. Oh, it is a calculus or a calculator problem. Yeah, but I don't know how to do that either. I was going to say, do you know how to do that? Um, do you know how to uh, take the second derivative? Does your calculator have a second derivative function? Uh, I would just take it twice, but I don't know how to do it with uh, implicit differentiation because there's no way to plug in two variables. Right. In my calculator. So I think the what I'd have to do is just plug it in, do what we did, and then plug it in the calculator. Yeah. The um, I, I think you did it the fastest possible way without a calculator. And right. I'm not even sure how to do that in the calculators they, they give you. The Inspire, you have a TI-84, right? Uh, TI-84 plus C plus, or whatever. It is. Plus C, yeah. That's going to be brutal to get into that calculator. Uh, keeping yeah. your keeping track of your parentheses is going to be brutal. Um, right. I'm not sure making that a calculator problem necessarily makes it easier. Um, no, I don't either. All right. How are we going to do this? Um, so if the integral... I don't know. Well, if it equals ah. 20, wouldn't it be 9? Hold on. This is a true statement. Understand? Yeah. Okay. They have given us this, and they've given us the negative of that. So another way I could write the, the right side, let's write the left side, 20, equals, from 0 to 2 is what we're trying to solve for, instead of plus, I'm going to put a minus, when you switch the limits of integration, you merely add a negative sign in front, in other words, from 2 to 4 is the negative of from 4 to 2. Okay. So, and they've given us this. This is 11. So, what's the answer? 31. Uh-huh. And that's the way you do those. The only things you, you have to know is uh, how to break up your limits of integration. In other words, 0 to 4 is the same as from 0 to 2 plus 2 to 4, and 2 to 4 is the negative of from 4 to 2. But 
why can't you just plug in 11 for the 2 to 4? Because that's what they – oh, 4 to 2. I get it. I read it wrong. No, I get it. No. That would have been too easy if they'd have given it to you 2 to 4. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would have been way too easy. Yeah. Improper integral. Now let's first of all write this out. How can we write this? Um. Can you get it out of a fractional form? Get it out of the radical sign. The radical sign is what calculus doesn't handle. Okay. So you have to make yeah. that a fractional exponent. So then it's 1 over um, x to the fifth, uh, one third, to the one third. Now well, here's what this right here is x to the 5 thirds. The denominator is always the root. The numerator is always the power that it's being taken to. Okay. Well, let's make this, let's put it all in the numerator. Can't really deal with denominators. So I'm going to put it like that. Okay. And integrate it. Pretty easy to integrate it. Then be negative five thirds x. Um, so you add one, so that'd be to the negative two thirds. Multiplied by the new, or excuse me, divided by the new exponent. That's the power rule when you're doing integration. Right. Okay. Which is the same as multiplying by the flip of that. Plus C. Oh, no, not plus C. We're going to evaluate it from 1 to infinity. You with me? Yeah. So, that would go to negative three halves. What's that? Wouldn't it go to negative three halves? Because the new exponent was negative two thirds. Yeah. So I was dividing by negative two thirds, which is the same as multiplying by negative three halves. Right. I'm just, I'm saying the answer would be negative three halves. Oh, well, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. I, I think we have to look at it a little further. I'm not sure that's correct. Okay. We have negative three halves times infinity to the negative two thirds. Well, let's put that down here because it's negative. It's a radical sign. It's the cube root of infinity squared. And I find that this is the easiest way to do it. I know the book tells you to put in a B and find the limit as B goes to infinity. But personally, I don't, I find this easier. Okay. Okay. And minus this whole thing evaluated at one, which must right. be minus three halves. Right. If I plug in one for X, that old thing has to be one. Right. Okay. So, what does that go to? That would go to zero. Yeah. And this and would be plus, plus three, halves. three halves, and that is the answer. I'm curious how you got it so quickly. How'd you know oh, that? Oh, I, I was wrong. Huh? Uh, I was wrong. I said negative three halves, and it's positive three halves. Oh, oh okay, okay, yeah. Uh, it's a little dangerous to just make that assumption, I think. 
Because right. notice that the X has a negative radical, which means it's going to be in the denominator, which means it's the denominator that's going to infinity. Right. Which means that whole thing goes to zero. So the only part that you're really evaluating is the second part based on the one. Right. And it is always subtraction. In other words, you take that minus that. Okay. Okay. But yeah, I've never seen the point of using a second letter like B and then finding the limit of this whole thing as B goes to infinity. Uh, right. I usually skip that step when I'm doing it myself. Uh, there might be cases where it matters. I can imagine that that might not work always, but. Right. Right. Um, also, uh -huh. um, I need to go like two minutes early today. I just found out that my school schedule is different because of a pep assembly. So, okay. Um, like in about six minutes, I got to head out. Okay. Uh, all right. Just want to let you know. No, that's fine. Uh, just holler whenever it is in case I don't, uh, okay. in case I don't remember. Um, okay. Hold on a second. I've got, oh, I know what I have to do. Finally figured out how to get these things in paint. Um, it's just a little slow. It's got to download it and show it before I can do it. Hope it doesn't take the whole six minutes. Uh, there. And that's not even good enough. I got to do this. see my downloads gotta move it over here and then I gotta open up with paint <laughs> all right All right, what is the Taylor series for e to the x? This is actually one of the easier ones to memorize. Uh, is it x plus x? It start off with x. I think it starts off with 1. 1? I believe so. Because remember, Maybe it's 1 plus x. I, I can look it up. Uh, do you have it in front of you? I do not. Let me get it. Um, well, I'm pretty sure because we had a problem once, what is x times e to the x? And the, right. first, the first term was x, which means the first term of e to the x has to be 1. Right. It's a 1 plus x plus x squared over 3 factorial. Is it three or two factorial? I think it's two factorial. Two factorial, yeah. I, I looked In other like, words, it always matches the exponent. When we're dealing with just the x. Right. So, this is interesting. Using the Taylor series, approximate e to the point two to three decimal places. It's ambiguous. Well, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. So we got 1 plus 0.2 plus 0.2 squared over 2 factorial plus 0.2 cubed over 3 factorial. You see what my problem is? Yeah, where, where do you stop? They didn't tell us how many terms of the Taylor series to use. Well, maybe the three decimal places means three terms. Well. I'm not sure. It's just a guess. Well, it's like, it's like when you figure out pi. The way they figure out pi is using an infinite series. And using just the first four terms of this arctangent Taylor series gives you pi to nine decimal places. So, and every term you add is going to add decimal places to it. 
but I'm not sure that's true here. We've got one plus, in other words, there's no relationship between how many decimal places you end up with and how many terms of the Taylor series you, get, you do. Right. This is 04 divided by 2 plus 008 divided by 6. Now, I, I, I presume one could say that that is to three decimal places. Yeah. Because we've got this term to three decimal places, even after dividing by six. Right. So that must be what they meant, but I really think it's a typo. I don't think that that's the way they should have put it. Right. Because who's to say this isn't to three decimal places? I can add a zero there. <laughs> You know what right. I'm saying? So yeah. it doesn't. I don't. I don't think they're correct here. I might be wrong on that, but um, it'd have been better if they'd have said use the first four terms of the right. two series um, okay. to approximate that. So uh, you approximate that, I'm going to you, but I gotta head out. Okay, sounds good, John. I'll talk to you next time. Yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye bye.
Oh, I got some visitors here. I got one visitor, huh? I got the Sunny. Sunny loved to visit me.
upside down. 